So uh, on the way over here yesterday, one of the new members of Sages uh, turned to me and said, uh, Dan, or actually Dr. Jones, uh, you know, what's Sages going to be doing next? I mean, you did the endoscopy, you did the laparoscopy, you did the robots, you know, what else might make me go? And I said, well, the next frontier we're going to talk about tomorrow is going to be Sages, the next frontier in space. She, she didn't believe me. Um, for disclosures, as a college student, we'd take a time out uh, and come out uh, and watch reruns of Star Trek. And so while it may not be a Trekkie, I definitely have seen all the episodes at least once. Now when you think about why Sages, it's actually interesting to know that the very first uh, publication of laparoscopy or, or surgery in space was actually in surgical endoscopy in 1996. And, and in that paper, they simply went to zero gravity operated on a pig and said, you know, this laparoscopic business, especially if they get the tools smaller and maybe automated and, and things like that, might solve some of the, the problems that we're going to ultimately encounter as we go further and further away from Earth. Now, uh, Dan Buckman, who's here with us today, um, was a medical student rotating on our service, and, and he came to me and said, uh, why isn't Sages uh, in space? And I said, well, as I would usually do, I said, why don't you write a paper on it? And he did. Um, and one of his concerns was we had the International Space Station. And the, the deal was if you had a problem, you got to get back to Earth. But if you're a young guy and you're entering the field of space and you want to go further and further away, um, the idea is we need another way of doing it. We just can't come back to home base. And Dan, uh, this is him in zero gravity. He'll be giving us a talk later, so this is him as a youngster. But what he said in the, in the end of that paper, which was actually a lead paper in surgical endoscopy at the time, was he concluded that sages should use exploration of the heavens to extend the reach of surgical technology beyond what we can currently grasp. Now, as we said, in 2012, we actually had a panel on surgery in space, and medical student Buckman was, was, Buckman was actually one who, who led it for us. Um, and it was very interesting, and we haven't really done too much since then, but out in the real world, space has continued to take a bigger and bigger presence. Here again is Dan at Duke. Um, just so you know, he's got many awards in um, aerospace medicine, and his focus research is really on solving the problems that limit us from going further and further away. And here's another medical student who's going to give us a talk today. He rotated on the service with us, Johnny. And Johnny Kim uh, w came by in 2015, at about the same time Sages was introducing the Sages coin. And at the end of his rotation, he very kindly uh, gave me his military coin that he had before. And so uh, when Johnny's going to speak today, though, as an astronaut, he's, he's scheduled to go to space. And uh, I'm sure he's listening to the talk right now. And so I, I want to extend to Johnny um, my Denver 2022 coin. I want to give it back to Johnny. And, and one of the things about these coins is not just for doing a great job, and I'm sure he's going to give us a great talk, but you have to carry him with you. And so what I hope Johnny will do is take the coin with him to space and, and give us a photograph uh, coming back when he, when he takes it. Now, what happens if an astronaut needs surgery in space? Well, first, we know it's going to be hard. And, but why? It's because, well, the blood won't pool in the surgical wound. You, so you've got to figure out how to contaminate it. And the other very interesting thing that I never really thought about is the contamination of the wound. Uh, the air in the spacecraft is full of hair follicles and dead skin all floating around, and, and uh, you can only imagine trying to keep that out of your operative field. Now, more has gone and happened in stages than you might think. In 2019, we had members of the Space Force now joining Sages as part of our military committee, and, and hopefully uh, more and more will join us uh, as the years go forward. And of course, Captain Kirk from Star Trek has, has in 2021, uh, actually blasted off into space at the age of 90. Now, as I said, I used to watch uh, all the reruns on, of the original Star Trek and some of the next generation. And one of the things that I always wanted to do to sort of expand my area of interest in research was the holodeck. And I'd always talk to our, my partner, who's a uh, aerospace engineer from MIT who now works at RPI and does virtual reality with me. I said, when can we have the holodeck? 
And, and a few years ago, again at Sages, we launched uh, what is our first holodeck, which was a OR, virtual OR, where we had a fire. And wearing an Oculus, we were able to test which of our surgeons knew how to use the principles of fuse. And today our research, funded by the NIH, is looking at using multiple uh, head, head mounted displays to create a virtual world that the whole operative team can communicate and work on team building skills. So when you scan the internet looking for great pictures, I came across this one. And here we see the surgeon, uh, and she's operating there with a robot coming down from above. And it kind of makes you think that sages working together, well, there's no limits on what surgeons can achieve with vision, innovation, passion, persistence, and a little luck. I think we're going to hear from our speakers talking about creating little hospitals on the moon. So what is SAGE's next frontier? Well, the next frontier is the same frontier we've always had, to boldly go where no one has gone before. 